and there is certainly a, a thing that I've been encouraging our, our membership organizations and allies or really anyone willing to listen um, is that we consider what happened when Justice Brown Jackson was engaging the Alabama Solicitor General during the oral argument for our case on October 4th of last year. And she was pushing back on some of the Alabama's theory, Alabama's theories by referring to the to the context in which the 14th Amendment was written. Because the, you know, many people on the conservative side believe the way you interpret the Constitution is based on what it literally says and what its context was when it was written. So she applied that same thing to the 14th Amendment to say, how do you as a state of Alabama um, suggest we impose a policy of race neutrality with uh, with with political map making when the under the 14th Amendment, when the 14th Amendment itself is not race neutral? It's speaking about the voting abilities of freed people during, you know, we see that testimony on record when the amendment was being ratified and free people are black people. That's who they were talking about. So it was a race conscious policy, but that, that, that was a, a real testament to where our work can go. Cause if we are able to even make conversation about ratification of an amendment to our U S constitution that establishes the right to vote and to have that vote counted, that seems pie in the sky and far off. But if we can even build the infrastructure to make that a viable conversation, we're doing something that will address that same infrastructure can be brought to bear on all of our other, you know, uh, traditionally more siloed issues.